guys and welcome to another video in my series of videos of university physics. Uh, we're going to be carrying on with statistical physics, our good old friend right here in this video. And uh, we just finished the first video. At the end of the first video, we sort of talked about uh, what microstates and macrostates are in a in sort of like a statistical system, uh, or what sometimes we call it an ensemble. Um, so we talked, we kind of introduced that. We introduced what like um, this term omega was, this omega, which was the number of microstates. And then I kind of parachuted this in. I basically just said that the entropy. Um, this is of course Boltzmann's famous formula. The Boltzmann entropy, uh, which is, if you like, a statistical way of defining entropy, is equal to the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the log of the number of microstates. And this is the number of microstates in a system of n particles which can share, which have to total a maximum energy of u right there. So I kind of just said this definition. Um, Boltzmann, of course, derived it himself, but we're actually going to be using this definition to carry on with other stuff in today's video. And well, I said that this term here, this omega term, is a very hard thing to uh, calculate. I did tell you this formula uh, that omega is equal to n plus u minus one, choose u, um, this way of calculating the number of microstates in a system, in a set of systems rather. Um, but in effect, this is not going to be very useful for a big box of gas. You know, you can't really, you know, know what n is or, or u is. It's going to be way too hard. So we've got to come up with some other method. And the way in which we do this, um, it, you remember in the last video I mentioned this W, which is the macrostate multiplicity. Um, the way that you actually uh, approximate uh, what the entropy is, is that you actually say that the number of microstates is approximately equal to the maximum number of macrostates. So it's the equal to the macrostate, uh, which has the highest number of microstates in. So let's say we have a big system. Um, this is just a very arbitrary thing that I'm doing. You know, it could be absolutely anything. Uh, so say we have one particle in this, uh, in, in this state, um, say you have five particles uh, in in the, this state right here, and say you got two particles in the, in in uh, that state right here. I'm representing each color as a different state, as a different energy state. Um, so of course, omega is all of these different states. So it's every single one. So the red one, uh, the all the green ones, and the two blue ones. So there are, if you like, eight different states. Um, but what I'm actually saying is that I'm actually uh, approximating uh, all of these states by the most probable state, which in this case is the green one. So this is a bit of a shit example because I've basically just said that eight is approximately five. Cue in those engineering jokes right here. But if you have a system of n particles, and believe me guys, n is a massive number. n is just so madly big, you can't even think about how big n is. Um, this will actually be the case. You can actually approximate the um, total number of microstates um, by the number of microstates which ha are in the most probable macrostate. So I'm going to put a little max underneath there. So this is the number of microstates which are in the most probable macrostate, if you like. Um, and this is how we are going to uh, we are going to apply this. Now you remember, I'll just get rid of this thing right here. This is just a bad example to show you what I was doing, but hopefully it's clear that what I'm what I'm doing. So if we substitute this into Boltzmann's formula right here, we say that the Boltzmann entropy is approximately Kb times the log of W max. So that is our approximation, and it turns out that it's a pretty good approximation for large. Uh, for large numbers of particles. So basically the condition is that n has to be large. Of course, I've kind of introduced statistical me uh, mechanics with just a few systems, so I've done it with n equals three. But um, 
in practice when we're applying this to gases n is going to be a madly big number so you don't have to worry about that not being a valid approximation now I also told you in the last video what the formula for n was and n was equal to oh not n sorry w I told you what the formula for w was the uh, macrostate uh, multiplicity or the number of permutations per combination if you like um, and I told you that it was n factorial divided by n naught factorial, n1 factorial, n2 factorial, n3 factorial. So each of these terms was the number of particles in energy level 0 or energy level 1. So for example, if you had three particles in energy level 2, then this number would be 3. Um, and of course, you keep going on and on and on um, up all the different energy levels. Um, and so that was how we worked out what W was. Uh, and W, so we have a formula for W, which, which is good. Um, so why not apply this formula, substitute in our, in our formula, into this Boltzmann formula right here? Well, I'm almost going to do that. I'm just going to forget about this Boltzmann constant right, now, right here. Um, so I'm actually going to just simply take the log of w right here. I'm going to take the log of this whole term and then later I'm just going to sort of sub it back in. So if I take the log of w I get, I'll just simply copy and paste this and put it all inside this natural log function. So this is the log of all of this and you can probably see we're going to be starting to use a few uh, log laws and so this is equal to the log of n factorial minus the log of all this other crap right here. There's n naught factorial, n1 factorial, n2 factorial, n3 factorial, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we're going to now use another log law, you'd be pleased to know. And we're going to take, uh, we're going to just slightly uh, expand out this term. We're going to use the relation that the log of AB is simply equal to the log of A plus the log of B. So that's our identity we're going to be using right here. And we're going to put this all in a bracket so we don't get ourselves confused. Um, it's the log of N0 plus the log of N1 factorial I should I should put do not forget the factorial log of n1 factorial plus um, the factorial should be in the bracket sorry about that plus the log of n2 factorial plus the log of n3 factorial and carry on going until infinity um, so we've kind of got this infinite sum right here and Unfortunately, it's time to break out the summation notation, which personally I am really not a fan of, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway, unfortunately. So we've got the log of n factorial minus, it's going to be an infinite sum that's going to be starting at the uh, j equals naught. Remember, I just call it j. j is just literally a dummy index. It's just a summation. You don't have to worry about what j is um, to some arbitrary maximum, capital J, again just a dummy thing, don't have to worry about it. Um, log of nj factorial. So this is our log of omega and this is what approximately it is. Um, now we actually have to use a, a an approximation, another approximation. Um, now this approximation is a fairly well established mathematical um, mathematical approximation and it's called Stirling's approximation. And what Stirling's approximation is, is that it says that the log of n factorial is approximately equal to n times the log of n minus n. And so this I will highlight because it's quite an important approximation um, that's going to be used probably more than once. Um, and that is that the log of n factorial is approximately equal to n multiplied by the log of n minus n. 
itself. And the key thing is, is that this approximation is only valid for large n. And where this comes from, it actually comes from when you want to integrate the natural log function of x. Um, you actually end up with x log x minus x. And you can see there's actually quite a close resemblance to, um, to this right here. But of course, integration is an infinitesimal thing. You have to take infinitely small uh, strips as you integrate along. Uh, but that's basically what the factorial is doing right here as well. So um, it actually does come from this right here, in case you're wondering. It's a well-established mathematical thing. But the approximation is only valid. It's only valid for large n. So with that in mind, we will carry on. Uh, and we're going to now use this uh, Stirling's approximation and we're going to write that the log of w is now approximately equal. So what's log of n factorial? Well, it's n times the log of n, approximately, minus n. And we've still got this extra term right here. Um, so it, this is going to be the summation from j equals 0 to j. Remember, j is just some dummy thing that you don't have to worry about. And, oh, look, we've got another another sterling -y thing. We, so we can sterling this. Um, I can't believe I just said I'm going to sterling something. What is wrong with me? So this is going to be nj times the log of nj minus nj. This is all in brackets right here, so we're going to be taking an infinite sum of this. So now I'm just going to break apart this sum right here. So we've got this big summation term, which we can actually break apart using the rules of summations. So this term is still going to be the same, n log n minus n. And instead of going to have one sum terms, we're actually going to end up with two summation terms. So we're going to have minus sum from j equals 0 to j of nj log nj uh, minus another sum going from j equals 0 to j of nj. Now what is the sum of from j equals 0 to j of nj? Well we are summing over all the energies and we're summing over all the energies in which all the particles are going to have so we must find that if we sum over every single energy, um, then we must get all the particles. We must find all the particles. So say we've got our little ladder right here. If we, we do that one, so say we've got five particles. There's one in here, there's two in, two in here, and there's two in here. And we know that there's none above this point right here. If we sum through every single one, we're going to find them all, aren't we? Um, and so therefore, this term right here is simply just going to be the same as n, just the number of particles. Uh, we will find all the particles if we check every energy level and count the number of particles in each energy level. So there we go. That just reduces down to n. Now you'll notice that we have a minus n and a minus minus n. And so we can reduce this even further. These two ends are just going to simply cancel each other out. Um, and so if we re rewrite this, just tidying it up, so we get that the log of w is n log n minus the sum from j equals 0 to j of nj log nj right here. So here we go. So this is what we've got so far. But what is nj? I'm now going to make a slight substitution. So I'm now going to introduce the um, term pj. Uh, and p stands for probability. So nj, remember I said, was the number of particles in energy state j. So it's the number of particles um, in the jth energy level, if you like. Um, but I'm now going to divide this term by the total number of particles. So if I have, so say let's take this this simple case as an example. Um, so I've got two in this energy level right here, uh, and I've got five particles in total. So what's the probability of 
being in this energy level, well, it's just going to be two fifths, right? You've got five in total, and there are two in this one. So the probability is simply, probability of it being in the jth energy level is simply um, the number in the jth energy level divided by the total number, n. So here we go. This is our definition of the probability. It should be fairly obvious. Um, it's the total number in the jth energy level divided by the total number of particles in all the energy levels. So I can now rearrange this and get that nj, that nj is simply equal to pj multiplied by n right there. So that comes straight from that. And so we can now substitute the nj's that are in this sum for pj. So we're still summing of j, uh, but instead of nj, I'm going to write n times pj times the log of n times pj. But look at this, we've got a log of a product again, so we can again break apart this logarithm. Um, to get, we're going to get sum j equals 0 to j of n pj, and we're going to get the log of n plus the log of pj right here. Um, so if you have a look at what we've got here, um, we're going to end up with again two summation terms. Um, since we've got two terms in here, we're just going to end up with two summation terms, and so we've got n log n minus the first summation, j equals 0 to j of n pj log n plus n pj plus the sum rather, sorry I missed out that sum, plus the sum of j equals 0 to j of n pj log pj. We've essentially just expanded out this bracket and expanded out the sum. But look at this term right here. What are we actually summing over in this term? Well, we're actually only summing over this little pj right here. This n log n, there's no j's in front of it, so it's not exactly being summed over, is it? So we can actually take all that out. We can take the n log n out the front of this sum and we simply are going to end up with summing from j equals 0 to j of pj. That's the only thing we're going to be summing over. But what is the normalization condition that I mentioned in the last video? If you sum over every energy levels, the probability, you're just going to end up with 1. That's a fundamental thing that, uh, that we talk about in statistical mechanics, is that if you sum over every single uh, possibility, all the probabilities must add up to 1. So this term right here, this term will simply just become 1. So we can wipe that off right here. It, all it will become is 1. And so we can then add, just add on uh, this extra term right here. The sum from j equals 0 to j. n p j ln p j. Uh, we can just bring this n out the front again, not being summed over pj log pj uh, and you can probably see that these two are simply going to cancel right here and so we end up with the final result that the log of w is equal and I do apologize I've made a sign error there that should be a minus sign and that should be in brackets right there that the log of w is approximately equal I should say to minus n times the sum from j equals 0 to j of pj times the log of pj. And what I've just derived right there is what's known as the Gibbs entropy. Um, well, almost the Gibbs entropy. I've just got to multiply it by the Boltzmann constant. Remember I said that s equals kb log of w. So all I actually have to do, I've got log w now, so all I have to do is multiply by the Boltzmann constant. So uh, I get that the entropy is minus nkb times the log 
of W, which I've just found out, which is this summation term right here. So sum from J equals zero to, of PJ ln PJ. And this is the Gibbs entropy. This is the Gibbs approximation to the entropy. And it's a pretty cool result, right? You know, I mean, it's cooler than the Boltzmann entropy because you can actually calculate it. Um, and so this is basically a relation that we will be using um, to actually get to thermodynamic properties. So there we go. That is the derivation of what the Gibbs entropy is. And you might be thinking, well, it doesn't look that great. It doesn't look particularly useful. And I'd probably agree with you right there. Um, but it's a step further. And in the next video, I'm going to uh, use this result to derive a very important probability distribution. And it's possibly the cornerstone of statistical mechanics. And it's called the Boltzmann distribution. Um, and you basically get it directly from solving this equation right here you maximize you what you do what's called maximize the this equation right here you find like the turning points um, and so I'm going to be going through that in the next video so oh <coughs> excuse me I'll see you guys then